After experiencing intense heartbreak and a canceled wedding, Kelly Rowland was done with relationships. But things changed after she met Tim Weatherspoon. Falling in love with him wasn't easy because she was so used to dating bad boys. Here's how she was able to let go of the past in order to marry the man of her dreams. Kelly managed to keep her private life away from the public eye, but after working with Nelly on his 2002 song Dilemma, she was linked to his former manager and bodyguard, Cut a Love. Kelly's song Dirty Laundry, which details a toxic relationship, reportedly references her turbulent relationship with Cutta. Without calling him out by name, she told OMG Insider that things never got physical between them. Instead, she was emotionally damaged by her ex and said she would never forget all the hurtful things he said to her. The romance came to an end, and in February 2004, she began shooting the independent movie, The Seat Filler. That's where she met former NFL player, Roy M He had invested some money in the film, but he was way more invested in getting to know Kelly. He told Vibe that after discovering how humble she was, he fell in love with her. Kelly had just ended her previous romance, and she wasn't in the mood to jump into another relationship, but Roy broke her down. He pursued her with flowers, cards, and a stream of supportive phone calls. Three months later, in May 2004, People Magazine reported the couple got engaged in New York City. Kelly told the magazine their wedding date was set for March 2005, and she couldn't wait to have two or three kids with Roy. As they were planning their wedding ceremony, Kelly convinced him to go to premarital counseling. While there, Roy was asked to fill out the getting to know your mate questionnaire, and that's when he realized he didn't really know Kelly well enough to make a lifelong commitment. He sat her down and broke the news to her, and he told Vibe magazine that Kelly was okay with his decision at first. But on Valentine's Day 2005, just a month before their planned wedding date, she reportedly cut off all communication with him. Kelly had previously posed for the cover of Modern Bride magazine to celebrate her upcoming nuptials, and by the time the magazine hit newsstands, their relationship was over. The embarrassment was too much for her to handle. She told Cosmo magazine that some days she couldn't even leave the house. After the end of that relationship, she decided to embrace the single life. She told a drinkwith.com that she threw parties at her Miami house every New Year's Eve, complete with Jolly Rancher and alcohol concoctions in a pole in the middle of her living room. It was an exciting and exhilarating period of her life, but deep down inside, she really wanted a partner in her life. In 2006, there were rumors she was dating LeBron James' friend and manager, Maverick Carter. She also dated another mystery man who wouldn't give her the attention she deserved. She told the New York Post that the unidentified man had his eyes on eight other women while she was giving him all of her undivided attention. She eventually walked away and healed from that relationship. She told the Daily Mirror in 2011 she was learning how to protect her heart. She said that until she was crazy in love, just like her best friend Beyonce, she wasn't going to let her wall down for just anyone. She added, when I get married, it will be for life. Divorce is not an option. In 2011, she became a host on the British television show The X Factor. Spending a lot of time living abroad changed her perspective on relationships. She told People Magazine she wanted to get wiped up by the time she turned 40, even if she had to marry a British man who had less money than her. She said she was almost positive that her future husband was somewhere in the UK, and she was looking forward to buying a house and settling down there. She failed to mention there was already a man in her life. When Michelle Williams joined Destiny's Child in late 1999, her childhood friend Tim Weatherspoon started hanging around the group as well. Kelly told a drinkwith.com she thought Tim was cute and she wondered why Michelle wasn't dating him. Michelle answered, oh God, no, he's family. I would never. Kelly and Tim then forged a friendship of their own and would talk for hours on the phone. But Kelly said that because she was super shallow back then, she wasn't interested in him romantically. His bald head, his shoes, and the fact that they were the same height really turned her off. She told Essence Magazine she could tell within the first 20 minutes of a date whether or not things were going well. 
However, it took her a little bit longer to figure things out with Tim. She agreed to go out with him, and he fell in love with her on their very first date. Kelly didn't know he was the one until date number three. Even then, she slipped back into old habits and almost ruined their relationship. She had another guy in her life who she described as a loser. However, she was really interested in him, even though Tim had everything she wanted in a man. While chatting with Vogue Australia, Kelly said she had grown afraid of commitment, and the idea of loving one person for the rest of her life frightened her. She tried to push Tim away early on by calling him on the phone and suggesting they take a break. Tim answered, what if we took a break from dating and God sent you a guy and that guy was me? Kelly said she hung up the phone right away. She was so scared because she could feel that Tim was her future husband. After some time, she decided to embrace their relationship and go all in. And she soon realized she didn't want to live without him. She told a drinkwith.com, I don't know what I did or who said a prayer, but man, I hit the lotto. After becoming an item, they mixed their personal and professional lives together. Tim began co-managing Kelly's career alongside Divine Stevens. But in May 2011, sources claim jealousy was a deciding factor in Tim reportedly urging Kelly to get rid of Divine so he could take full control of the management duties. In December 2013, Kelly was in Bulgaria and Tim was back in the States. They were chatting via Skype when Tim popped the question. Kelly said it wasn't hard for her to say yes. Once they were reunited, he surprised her with a cushion-cut engagement ring with the halo surrounding the center stone. According to Hollywood Life, the ring cost an estimated $100,000. After the 2014 Met Gala, where Solange and Jay-Z got into their elevator altercation, Kelly and Tim boarded a private plane and headed to Costa Rica. In front of 27 friends and family members, including Beyonce and Solange, they became husband and wife. Kelly told Vogue it was the most beautiful wedding. She said she cried more that day than any other day of her life. She added, to confess your love like that to someone is so powerful. One month after their wedding, Kelly announced they were expecting a child. And six months after their wedding, they welcomed their baby boy, Titan. Connecting with Tim on a deeper level is something she has made a top priority. They make sure to go out on a date every single Friday night. Sometimes they'll go to a restaurant and not even speak one word to each other, but being together means everything to them. Because of her unconventional relationship with her parents, Kelly told Essence Magazine she always wanted to have her own family. And now that she finally has everything she's always dreamed of, she wakes up every morning filled with so much love and gratitude. Let us know your thoughts on Kelly and Tim's love story. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.